Spinal Fusion A Lif of the L5 S1, which is an anterior lumbar interbody fusion with posterior instrumentation. This is a recovery. Hey everybody, uh, this is, I don't know, my sixth attempt at <laughs> some terrible news videos. Uh, today is August the 30th. Uh, I'm uh, just under a week shy of five months post-op from having an A-lift, an anterior lumbar interbody fusion of the L5 and S1 vertebrates with uh, posterior instrumentation. So any of y'all that have been watching this, uh, you know, doing this primarily just to hopefully be an encouragement so other people could see that, you know, not everybody's having bad luck with this. You know, some people are having some really, really, really good luck with this, and I am certainly one of them. So I just want to hopefully be an encouragement to other people, let y'all know that, you know, there's there's a good life to be had with this surgery, and you can move forward and, and really change the quality of your life. In my case, 180 degrees for sure, without a doubt. So 100% uh, zero pain with you know, the back pain I used to have. Uh, I do still have uh, some muscle tenderness and tightness, uh, the bottom left part of my back, or sorry, bottom right part of my back. Uh, most of the pain I used to have, oddly enough, was in the bottom left and into the center. Uh, but right now I've been having this issue in the bottom right every morning I get out of bed and it's just really, really tight. But if I, if I stretch and hold it and then stretch back, you know, in both directions, it goes away. Um, it, or at least it subsides enough where it's, you know, a lot, lot more tolerable. Uh, get in the hot tub. If you can get into a hot tub and do some stretching in the hot tub, um, I highly recommend it because that is, that is a big deal. That really helps out a ton. Uh, and then if you can get into a pool or swim somewhere, uh, I got in a pool, swim in that. I come out, I feel like a million bucks. Uh, it absolutely is amazing as to how good that feels. Uh, the first couple times I did it, I was like, dang, I'm working some muscles I forgot I had, you know, but um, man, after that, it just felt so good releases a lot of that um, tightness that you have in your body it just really makes you more fluid more flexible just feel great so fast forwarding um what um let's see what i want to tell you all about oh yesterday i had a doctor appointment and uh as an update and everything's looking fantastic the fusion's going well all the instrumentation's still exactly where it should be nothing's moved nothing's loose everything's nice and tight uh, which says a lot considering the fact that i have done a lot um done a lot of walks um, I've, I've put just an insane amount of miles on my feet since this surgery um i'll have to look that up for y'all and, and and tell you actually i could i could probably look it up while i'm sitting here talking to y'all and give you an update on that probably should have had this ready ahead of time but the amount of distance that I have gone has been just absolutely ridiculous. So if, if you take out from, let's see, I had this surgery in April. I did that month 409,631 steps. And I've gone down ever since 382,425, 306,085, went back up again to 345. 901 and so far this month 300 683,000 uh, that's since April so um, since February since I started tracking this stuff I have literally walked 1,127.5 miles um, that's just in walking steps so uh, I have swam hiked biked uh, and i of course i go a little bit to the extreme on my swim uh, i've gone up to 450 yards non-stop on um, my biking i do 15 mile bike rides at average of 14 plus miles an hour and then i've done hikes upwards anywhere from five to, to ten miles out in the woods which has just been awesome i absolutely love doing that florida uh, in the august absolutely sucks because it's so stinking hot but man way better than just walking the pavement around with all these stupid cars and noise and you know getting out there in nature is one it's just healthy for you getting out in the sun is healthy for you the vitamin d just the just the what it does for you mentally is phenomenal um look it up uh, just being out in the sun and not in your house does wonders for you mentally just it helps your skin um not that i'm overly concerned about that because i've burnt into a crisp for the last 20 something years working outside so um probably not a good thing for me but anyway um 
you know, getting out and about doing stuff is really, I think, important for your recovery rather than you sitting around. Uh, well, I know it is. It's not I think. I know it is. I know for a fact it is a proof that it is. So uh, get up and, and get encouraged to get up and get out. Uh, and look, if, you, if you've lived a life prior to your back surgery of just laying around doing absolutely nothing and you got overweight, maybe that's what contributed to your back surgery, uh, listen, you got a lot of work to do. It's not just let me go get this quick fix and, you know, sit back on the couch and continue eating a bag of chips. Uh, that's not going to get you where you need to be. And some of you, that might be hard to hear. And I'm sorry, uh, I'll tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. I'm not a candy coater by any means. I just tell you, you know, how it is. So you've, you've got to be able to do stuff that's better for yourself. Pay attention to what you're eating and what you're putting in your body. I mean, half of what we eat is absolutely garbage. This processed food crap, I um, really honestly believe it has a lot to do with mental illness that's out there. Uh, but aside from that, it's, it's just not good for your body. And, you know, they shove this whole, you know, eat, eat this box of this, that box of that, and it's all just junk. I mean, it really truly is. So what, what I want you to, to realize is that sitting around causes you to sit still. And you can't move forward if you sit still. You know, I mean, physically, you, you physically can't get past a certain spot unless you get up and move forward to get past it, right? And that applies to fill in the blank, right? So get up, eat healthy, lose weight, get some cardio going. You know, start off light. You don't have to go crazy. Just start off light. Walking, it's amazing. I'll tell you what, I, I thought I was... You know, uh, heart-wise and, and cardiovascularly, I, w I was in pretty good shape in, in that sense. I always had been. But just the walking, you know, if you all remember the beginning of this thing, I, I was walking 10 miles a day for a while. And, you know, I've trickled down. I walk no less than three miles a day, six days a week right now. Um, but I walk that first thing in the morning. I mean, first thing in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm out there walking. Do I do three miles? And then sometimes I do... You know another mile or two before the day is over uh, and i'm talking about an actual dedicated walk i'm not talking about your just regular steps don't don't even count that don't even count that i'm talking about going for a an actual measured walk put a mile in put two miles in three miles whatever you know and start off small you know you want to get to doing 10 miles a day you don't have to do 10 miles in one walk dude five two mile walks it's not that hard it really isn't or start off doing five miles do one you know, five one mile walks. You know, this stuff is not overly complicated to do. So you just gotta get in your mind, hey, I gotta go and do this stuff. And and listen, having the back surgery, is it uncomfortable when you get out there and start doing this? Yup. It sure is. You know, nothing in life comes easy, right? But you you get out there and you, you work through this stuff and you'll find that it, it does get better, it does get easier. And the pain subsides. Um, you know, you're, you're, you, you're stretching out those areas that haven't been used in years and years. And, you know, they, especially once you're, you're allowed to start bending and twisting, once they do allow any of that, you're going to find out, wow, I'm starting to hurt again. And that's because you're using stuff that you haven't used in a really long time. So once that you get past that hump, it's going to be that way for, you know, four to seven days-ish. You get over that hump, and then you're like, oh, Hey, it doesn't hurt anymore. I'm feeling better. Oh, and I can bend more. I'm able to do more. I can twist more. I can bend over and tie my shoes and it doesn't hurt. Again, I can put socks on and it doesn't hurt. I can put my pants on and it doesn't hurt. You know, I mean, all these things that you'd have to bend over to do and it doesn't hurt. You know, I, I'd have to prop myself up on, on my arm up against my leg if I had to lean over to do anything. So because my upper body just physically couldn't hold the weight up without it hurting so incredibly bad. So if you can prop your arm on your leg, your weight's being at your arm and at your shoulder, and it helps with releasing the amount that's dedicated to just your back, right? So I used to do that all the time. I don't need to do that anymore. It's awesome. <laughs> it's absolutely awesome. So uh, getting up every day and not just going, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. I don't even want to move. I don't even want to get up. And you have to do it anyway. And you hurt incredibly bad. And it, you know, does it get a little bit better as your day goes? Sometimes, uh, and then sometimes it gets a whole lot worse, especially if you do anything. God forbid you sneeze or cough in the middle of a bend or a twist or even just standing still. Um, if you didn't, you know, 
lift your leg or, or hold yourself in a certain way to guard for that cough or that, or that sneeze, you are going to wind up being in even more pain. I uh, feel like somebody stuck a knife in you and just, you know, is twisting it all day long. Um, those days are over for me, and I hope they do for you. I hope that's where you get as well. Um, don't be scared of the surgery. Do your research, of course. Uh, make sure who you're going through has got a good reputation, doesn't have malpractice suits out the wazoo for removing the wrong vertebrate or the wrong discs. Uh, you know, there's, there's guys out there that are practicing medicine that are still in practice, still doing surgeries that have malpractice suits that have paid out for doing those very things, and they're still doing back surgeries. It's like, you know, people that are paralyzed come out of their clinics paralyzed because of a, a malpractice issue. And look, yeah, I know this isn't a perfect science behind this stuff. I know that it's, it's not guaranteed, and there's always a risk of it. But when you, when you see numerous malpractice suits under the same person, in which, you know, I had a guy that, that was re, I was referred to that did, and I was like, this guy's not touching me. So you got to do your research, you know, and, and oddly enough, one can call it coincidence, one can call it fate. Um, I believe in the fate portion more than the coincidence. Um, but, you know, when I broke my hip, I wound up in a hospital where the orthopedic surgeon that was there, they're all like, hey, man, you know your back's messed up, right? Because, you know, they had, to, they had to do a scan from head to toe of me, every bit of me, because it was a, it was a big fall. I mean, obviously, I, I broke the biggest bone in my body at the biggest place possible in that bone which took a, a, quite a blunt force. So they uh, they checked everything else to make sure that I, I didn't have internal bleeding and all kinds of other crap. And anyway, all of that said, they got to see my back in, the, in those scans and were like, you didn't fall on your back, it was just your side. I was like, yeah, it's just my side. And they're like, you know your back is is messed up. And I'm like, yeah, it's been like that forever. And they're like, man, who, what are you doing about it? You know I mean? These are conversations they're having with me at the, at the, the emergency room before surgery. I said, well, you know, I was supposed to get surgery years ago. I just didn't do it. And some of y'all might remember this in some of my earlier videos speaking of this. but uh, And they all pointed, you know, man, you need to get the guy that's doing your surgery today. That's who you need to do this. So he's a spinal surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, you know. So that's the, the guy that you need to have to do this surgery for you. He's got a phenomenal reputation. So, you know, now I go up to my, to my room. I'm done with surgery. And my nurse is are telling me my day nurse what was left of the day uh, at that point it was, it was late afternoon going into the uh, early evening I should say going into the uh, evening shift and she's telling me the same thing my, my night shift doctor or nurse is telling me the same thing you know you got to get this guy to do it you got to check this guy out you got to check this guy, best guy out there you know yada 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 get done with all of that and you know I'm out the next morning you know <laughs> that's how good he was I'm out the the next morning and uh at his office, my first follow-up, you know, the nurse is there telling me about this guy. You need to talk to your your doctor because he has got an incredible reputation. He's He does these surgeries all the time, yada, yada, yada. I mean, just nothing but good. And so I started researching him and everything went well. Uh, and the rest is, you know, I did. I scheduled my surgery. I had it four months ago, well, almost five months ago. And I, I, I have not felt better and I'm telling you, 20 years. I mean, it literally has taken probably 20 years and given it back to me. Uh, it's it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. So do your research. Find you somebody. Don't be fearful over it. Get out there and get this thing done. Um, you know, at the right place with the right person. And do the right things. You know, take care of yourself. I mean, there's a lot that goes into this. It's not just, oh, I just go under the knife and everything's going to be fixed. Hey, that guy on YouTube told me, oh, I just get this done and I'd be feeling better. There's a lot involved there. Do your homework. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself when you get out of surgery. And continue taking care of yourself. Do what they tell you to do. You know, um, but do it, uh, in my case, I do it right to the edge of that. I do every bit right to the limit, right to what they say. You know, and, and, and I'll question them on it. Well, you know, that's it's cake for me. You know, this this whole 10-pound thing is, is pathetic, you know, and... And they're like, hey, be lucky. I told you 10 because we tell everybody else five. And I'm like, <laughs> five pounds? I mean, my shoe weighs that. Not really, but, you know, it's like, how crazy is that? It sounds weird, you know? So 10 pounds, you're thinking, oh, wow, I got some great leniency there. And then it moves up to 35 whopping pounds. And 
you know, 35 pounds for me is, is nothing, but for somebody else, it might be. So, you know, take, take heed their instructions, but move forward and get yourself right to the edge. Listen, I went on my first uh, physical therapy appointment for them to just to say, man, you're at the 99 percentile of where you should be at 12 weeks of therapy and you're already there on day one. So there's nothing else we can do for you until the doctor releases or eases some of your restrictions and we have another set of things we can do that are within those restrictions. I get to that set, I see the doctor, doctor lifts them, gives me some more things I can do, I can bend, I can twist. So they reassess me, I go through all of that and he's like, man, just keep doing what you're doing because you're there's nothing else we can do for you either because you're already way far away. So I've only had to have two physical therapy appointments and those were just to do the physical therapy assessments and each time they were like you know you don't need us so you know they, they don't call me freak of nature for nothing but still the same it's because I didn't sit around I stayed busy I did what they told me I could do to the absolute fullest of what they would allow me to do and I was calling over there all yeah, I should say all the time but I called there frequently they know me quite well over there and said, hey, can I do this too? Hey, can I do that too? And, and they, they would forever tell me, slow down, take it easy, not yet. Just, you can do that, but just, she only wants you to do this much or he only wants you to do that much. And, you know, take it easy, slow down. I heard that so much. And I'm just not a take it easy, slow down kind of guy. I'm, I'm always been hundred miles an hour, but, um, you know, this thing, the back, back thing slows you down incredibly. Um, but I've got my life back. You know, I can't wait to go and see my granddaughters because I'll be able to do those things with them that I couldn't do the last time I saw them. And that excites me. Uh, I'm super excited about that. So uh, I'm at that stage I'm there now. So we're going to schedule up those um, trips for next month and we're going to get out there and we're going to see them and uh, be able to do stuff with them that, again, I couldn't do when I saw them last year. So uh, that's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to it. And look, you can do it too. You just got to, again, do your homework. Don't give up. Push forward, push forward, push forward, push forward. You, you never move forward unless you, you're going. So uh, I hope that does you all well. Hope hope uh, it's encouraging for you. And, again, if, you, if you're fearful over this stuff, you know, again, do your homework. Don't be fearful. You know, just get out there and get it done. And, look, uh, you know, God didn't give you a spirit of fear, you know. So you, you've got to shake that stuff off and push forward it might be a little kind of like sketchy at first and you're kind of wondering you're a little nervous it's the difference between nervous and fear okay um don't be you know i went in there that day for surgery and they were just like the easiest guy ever i was like i am so ready for this i was super excited i was like stick it in me right there let's put me out let's get this thing going i'm ready to get it done and and they did i mean it was like wham bam boom i'm next thing you know i'm in recovery next thing you know i'm home next thing you know i'm just doing the next thing so uh you know y'all can do it too and there's plenty out here that have uh, in fact uh, the, the, the guy that I mentioned earlier he's he's on uh, i can't remember his probably two videos maybe three videos ago he's in the description section with his link on there check his video out or his uh channel out as well he's got a lot of videos on there about his recovery and a lot of it's very similar to, to some of the, the things that i've had to deal with so you'll see it's not just an anomaly that's not some rare breed thing um you know this is more than one person deals with this kind of great news. So uh, I'm hoping that those of you that, that are going through these surgeries as well, look, do some YouTube videos on this. And if you've got good, positive things to put in there, post it. There's so much negative stuff out there and people are searching. I mean, I, just look at my comment section on all my videos and you'll see how many people are having the surgery or have just had the surgery or thinking about having it, but are scared because of the videos that they have seen. And, you know, we need more people leaving good, positive things, not all this negative garbage that's out there. And, and like, I get some people have just not had good luck with it. And, and I, that, you know, I don't know what to say for those folks, you know, other than my heart goes out to them. But that said, uh, we, we need some more positive things out there to help people be encouraged to move forward, not scare the daylights out of them to not do something. So anyway, uh, with that get some people to do that so anyway y'all have a good one uh i probably won't talk to you again for another few months god bless